What up guys, JT Anime Nerd here bringing you all that nerdy goodness. Today we continue my version of the concept of a Spyro TV series. The past 5 episodes have been very lore heavy and focused on a main linear story, but now we're gonna step back a bit to get, get back to the bit of the basics, and give you guys some episodic episodes to give the main story a little breathing room. But that's not to say the main story won't be built up across these episodes. Next, for the introduction of a new villain called The Shepherd, the voice actor I would choose for him is Alex Hirsch. When I think of The Shepherd, I think of Old Man McGucket from Gravity Falls, which is the kind of personality I want for this character. You'll see what I mean. Also, to introduce the voice actor I would pick for the character of Red, who appeared at the end of Episode 5, he would be voiced by Alfred Molina. I don't think I need to explain why Alfred Molina's voice is perfect for a villain, you just have to hear his work for yourself. Finally, I want to give a shout out to the Big 3 Box Network, aka Bugsy. He made a video reviewing my Spyro the Dragon TV concept series, and I can't thank him enough for that. I've only been doing YouTube for a few months, and someone actually loved my series enough to make a review of it. So if you're watching this, Bugsy, thanks a bunch man, you rock. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below if you guys want to check it out. I highly recommend it. So without further ado, I give you Episode 6, Barnyard Battle Ranch. The story begins within the Artisan Kingdom. The dragons all living their peaceful lives. It's been peaceful here in the Five Kingdoms for about a week since Nasty York. We now have all of our 12,000 treasure back. Wait, I'm sorry, 14,000 treasure. We've just been living our lives to the fullest since then. Help! Meanwhile, Spyro and Sparks are flying all around the courtyard just to take in the sunny day and patrol Olet as well. But you know what they say. Spyro looks down to find the source of the distress call. A hero's work is never done. Help someone! Hearing the call for distress, Spyro and Sparks look down and glide toward their destination. Especially the heroes who pretty much saved everyone. Spyro and Sparks glide down to be met with by a dragon youngling. What's wrong, little gal? The dragon child points upward. My sheep! He's stuck in a tree! <laughs> huh, funny. This usually happens with cats. And old, old people. Let's not go there. Not to worry. Spyro and Sparks fly up the tree, meeting eye level with the sheep. Spyro then inches closer to the sheep. Come on, little guy. Come here, sheepy. Spyro and Sparks then get clo a closer look at the sheep. Wow, you look a lot like that sheep creep. Don't call me sheep creep! Ah! Spyro flies back for a moment, startled by Toasty's outburst. Toasty? Yes, it's me. And I'm not coming down! Oh, now I get it. This is your community service for helping protect the dragons with Mrs. Shoutfire. When you agreed to help lower my sentence, I imagined a padded cell, not pain and suffering with these little brats. Come on, kids are cute. Calm down, sheepy. Mama's hungry! Oh, see what I mean? I say we cook him. What was that? Uh, nothing. Just then, an unexpected visitor arrived. There you are, Toasty. Get back down here. You still have to finish your a day of community service. I can't exactly do that if I'm breakfast. Mrs. Shellfire then looks down at the dragon youngling. Oh, now, little one, I told you he's one of the ones you can't eat. Mrs. Shellfire! Spyro and Sparks fly down to meet up with Ember's grandmother. You're working with Toasty? Oh yes. After the dreadful Nork incident, I decided to become a volunteer nanny for the nursery. I even convinced the elders to place Toasty in my care as part of his community service. It's more than enough repayment. Yeah, well, I don't get paid enough! Would you rather, or your stomach get stuffed? <laughs> I have nightmares about Haggis. Besides, this is the best I can do to atone for everything I've done. 
especially for never telling Ember the truth. Huh? Is that all? It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that the head and nanny gets to hang out with the elders all day. I don't know what you mean. My relationship with Aster is strictly professional. Oh, he didn't mention Aster. Mrs. Shalfire then opens her eyes wide, blushing at the fact that Sparks tricked her. Well, if you're feeling lively enough to make jokes, then why not help with the residents? I'm sure you heroes know what you're doing. Come, Toasty! Toasty then slides down from the tree, catching up with Mrs. Shoutfire while showing an expression of slight fear. I'm not going near that girl again, am I? Mrs. Shoutfire? Spyro and Sparks chuckle a bit in response to Toasty's fear. Oh, Spyro! Spyro and Sparks look to see an elderly dragon. Yes, sir? Can you help me round up my flock? Spyro and Sparks look on to see a spread out group of sheep. Ah, no problem. Moments later, Spyro closes the pen with the flock inside. All done. Thank you, young lad. Oh, Spyro. Spyro turns to see another dragon with a problem. A hand? Ah. Spyro, can you help me find my treasure? Sure. Can you help me clear my lawn? No problem. Help me clean my latrine? What's a latrine? Spyro, 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 my man! Spyro! Ah! Moments later, Spyro and Sparks are lying down exhausted on a boulder. Just then, an exhausted ember and flame walk up to the duo. You guys too, dudes? You have no idea. We had to help nearly half the artists in Kingdom all day. Some of them even made us struggle just for us to give them our autograph. I don't get it. I mean, I know we're heroes of the Five Kingdoms, but we're not problem solvers. We're kids. We want to spend all day having fun. Yeah, well, it's not every day kids defeated everyone's greatest enemy and saved pretty much everything. Now that everyone knows what we're capable of, they're gonna come to us for to solve the, all the root of their problems. Well, we gotta do something, because if I have to clean one more latrine... <sighs> What's a latrine? Moments later, Spyro and friends decide to wander through the artisan forest, all to get a breath of fresh air from the endless requests. Good idea to go for a walk. This is really refreshing. Just then, Flame steps forward, opening his wings to stop his friends from going any forward. Whoa, not another step, dudes. What's up? Yeah, you got another sneeze coming along? Because if so, I'm gonna hide over there. No, dude, it's not allergy season yet. But that's not why. We're right across from <laughs> the Dark Hollow. Dark Hollow? It's one of the main battlegrounds from the Nork Wars. Stories keep saying that spirits of the Norks haunt the place, but it's not true. I know that. That's not why, though. Then what are you freaking out about? Don't you remember? The Dark Hollow's the home of Old Man Shepherd. <laughs> Who's Old Man Shepherd? Legends say that way before the Nork Wars. There was a lone shepherd who had a flock of sheep, but before long, he grew tired of herding sheep and wanted to herd something else, something more challenging. And so one day, a dragon wandered into his home, a powerful one too. And without explanation, the shepherd grabbed the dragon and he was never heard from again. Stories say every dragon he kidnaps, he turns into dragon sushi and serves them to dragon cannibals! Spyro, Ember, and Sparks look at Flame with an expression of awkwardness. Have you been getting into the dragon nip again? Stop telling you the truth, guys! Okay, it is likely that an old man who shepherds sheep lives here, at least in there. 
but I doubt he's a crazed dragon kidnapping cook who serves dragon cannibals. Either way, dude, the elders always told us never to come in here. Let's go back. Sparks then flies forward, a smug grin on his face. You know, I was never one for authority. Sparks? Come on. You know I'm not one to shy away from danger. You are when it involves life-risking death. Hey, I'm a hero too, you know. People change. But you never do. <sighs> Come on, guys. You can't let him wander alone. He gets lost easily. As Spyro and Ember walk on, Flame is on edge. But, guys! Oh, oh man! Flame then walks alongside his friends, deciding to stick by them in the most dangerous place in the Artisan Province. Ugh, we're so doomed. Come on, we beat the Norks. What could go wrong? As Spyro and friends are walking through the forest in the distance, someone is watching them through a telescope. Well, what have we here? Dragons? Oh, how it must be my lucky day! We interrupt this broadcast to give you awesome merch! Support JT Anime Nerd by purchasing from his merch store on Etsy! Like this Why So Serious Joker hat, or this I Always Come Back William Afton hat! You can even support the creator himself by purchasing the Bringing You All That Nerdy Goodness shirt! Multiple variants coming soon. Supplies may be limited, but new merch is added monthly. You can visit the shop by clicking the link below in the description and pinned comment section. And if you make a purchase, let us know in the comments below, and we'll be sure to give you a shout out for every purchase at the end of each video. Enjoy JT Anime Nerd, bringing you all that nerdy goodness. And be sure to Hulk smash that subscribe button if you wish to see more of JT Anime Nerds videos. Thanks for watching. Moments later, Spyro and friends have made it into the Dark Hollow, only noticing the old abandoned artisan architecture as well as the strangely abandoned bookshelves. These buildings look older than the elders. Must have been crafted by the Norks. I guess they had some artistic taste. Yeah, the taste for dead skin and bones. Okay, I think we're in deep enough. I think it's time we headed home. Well, howdy there! <sighs> Flame hides behind a nearby tree. Whoa, Sparks. That was a good country impression. Uh, that wasn't me. Up here, little dragon! Up, just up here! Spyro looks up to see what appears to be a frail old man atop one of the ancient structures. Well, howdy there! Name's Old Man Shepherd. I'm the owner of the ranch not too far from here. About time I got visitors. I was beginning to feel like no one survived the Nork Wars. <laughs> just yakking your chain. I think you mean yanking, old guy. Nope! Oh, how long it's been since I've seen a yak! Spyro and friends look on awkwardly at Shepard. Just kidding! I've never seen one! <laughs> Spyro and friends continue looking on an awkwardness. Oh, that one always gets me. But look, it's really nice to at least see anyone here. The Dark Hollow used to be such a beautiful place to roam at night. Now that the structures have been damaged by the Nork Wars, people think it's too scary to visit. I've been so lonely ever since. I see. Well, it's nice to meet you. I'm Ember. And I'm Spyro. This little guy is my brother Sparks. I may be small, but I still save the world. Wait a minute. That must make the one hiding behind the tree flame. How do you know who we are, old man? Who doesn't know about the heroes who done brought down the rest of the Nork Empire? You even brought down that no-good nasty Nork, who used to strong-arm me for free flock! Did you say... free flock? Don't fall for it, Spyro! Sure! Y'all can help yourself to some chops already made! It's official. I worship this man. Oh. A moment later, Shepard leads Spyro and friends up a hill through some trees. It's right up this clearing! 
As Spyro and friends go up the hill, they see what appears to be a tranquil ranch, countless sheep scouring the pen behind the bar. Wow! Incredible! Heck of a buffet. Uh, not bad. I guess. Ah, oh, shucks! No need to pot over it! It's a common profession! If you don't mind me asking, how come I've never seen you sell to the local dragons? Yeah, business wasn't like it was back then. Ever since the dragons found out how to breed and shepherd their own sheep, it's been a struggle. But either way, I haven't let it get to me. Now how would you kids like to see the bar? And there's the free food! Awesome! I'm in. Sparks then begins to show a curious expression on his face as Flame walks toward him. You good, Sparks? If there's one thing I never trust, it's free food. I learned that after free day at Bruno's Gumbo Palace. Ooh, yeah. Health Inspector wasn't friendly after that. So, you believe me? I'll take a look around. You just keep on their tail. Sparks then takes his leave. Flame, you coming? Oh yeah, I'm coming. Flame then runs up to Spyro, who's sticking his head out of the barn door. Where's Sparks? He went to see the sheep. That's weird. He hates sheep. After sheep creep, I don't blame him. Flame then walks into the barn. Okay. As Spyro follows Flame inside, Sparks is looking around in the sheep pen, feeling ah odd around the sheep. Why am I getting an inkling? And did I seriously use the word inkling? Sparks looks around in response to the sound, a sound reminiscent of a dog's bark. As Sparks looks around, he notices a particular sheep. Sparks then reaches out to touch the sheep, only for what appears to be a large chunk of fluff to fall off and reveal a furry puppy underneath. What the dragon? Yeah, I can pull that off too, guys. Within the barn, Spyro and friends look at the pet ends with sheep. Flame then notices Shepard wearing something. Why are you wearing a mask? The smell's kind of gotten to me even more with age. It's hard to notice when you first step in. Spyro and friends then sniff, only to be introduced by the smell of, well, sheep droppings. Whoa! <laughs> That's foul. Okay, I admit, this is the only scary thing in here. Just then, as Shepard backs up toward a wall, he reaches for what appears to be a lever hiding behind a block of hay. I guess I was wrong. Guess you're not a dragon kidnapping old man. Who said I wasn't? Wait, what? Uh, guys? Spyro and friends then look on as a sheep's wool head wool has fallen, revealing it to be a puppy eating hay. Shepard then swiftly pulls the lever opening a trap door under where Spyro and friends are standing, causing them to fall down it. <laughs> Moments later, Flame awakens to find himself in what appears to be an underground cage, Spyro and Ember waking up at the same time while also noticing creatures in cages across from them. Dudes! Flame? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. That was right! Well, where are we even? I think it's somewhere under the bar. You're quite smart for a youngin', ain't ya? Spyro and friends then stand up, looking at Shepard with expressions of anger. I told you guys! He's a dragon cooking cannibal server who's gonna turn us all into sushi! Yeah! What kind of rumors have you been hearing? I don't serve my animals to cannibals! Yeah. I did, however, sell animals so the buyers could serve them up themselves! Spyro and friends then look at the old man Shepard with expressions of hilarious shock, their eyes widened as open as their mouths are. Oh, don't judge me! It's a circle of life! Besides, I went out of business years ago. As you can see, I'm in a new business now. But I don't understand. Why capture us? Well, let's see. 
Maybe because if not for you dragons, I wouldn't have gone out of business. I was making a myth selling sheep to norks, but then you dragons came in and waltzed them out of town. So, I came up with a new business venture. Shepard then places a makeshift poster on the wall, revealing his new business venture. All the man Shepard's Battle Ranch! I capture the fiercest creatures this side of the Five Kingdoms and have them fight to the death! And what attracts a crowd to an illegal fight more than the dragons that defeated the Norks? <laughs> Spyro and friends look toward a steel door with the words Devil spray painted at its front. What's that? Oh, that's just Devil. You won't have to face him. Cause you'll be dog me before the end of the show! Literally, I gotta feed my dogs. You twisted old... <laughs> Just then, two dogs begin growling and barking, intimidating Spyro. Those dogs? Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a show to prepare for! Spyro and friends look down the hall to see the countless cages of animals they have yet to see. How long have we been out? About an hour, I proclaim. Who's there? Just then, Spyro and friends look to the corner of the cage, seeing a figure with big horns. Salutations. I'm a prisoner, like you all are. Who are you? The person then stands up, beginning to walk out of the shadow of the corner. Where are my manners? The being then reveals himself to be an elderly red dragon, holding himself up with a walking stick. You may call me... Red. Red, huh? How'd you end up here? I'm what one would call a nomad. After fighting in the Nork Wars, I decided to go on my own venture. There was just much I needed to atone for. War can lead many scars. We know that the war was started by the dragons. I can't imagine how you must have felt by the end of it. Yes, the wars have scarred me greatly. But how is it you've come to know this information? It's a long story. Right now, we may want to focus on getting out of here. Way ahead of ya. Zoe! But how? Sparks then emerges from behind Zoe. I thought I'd make a quick pit stop. Sparks! We got an elderly dragon with us. Help him after getting us out of here. No problem. Let's get you all out of here. Zoe comes into physical contact with the trio, only for Zoe's teleportation magic to have zero effect. What the? Zoe, look. Just then, strange collars magically appear around the trio's necks, a collar in the shape of a serpent. It's no use. Shepard did not create these collars, but I've no doubt that he bartered it from one who knows the most ancient of magics. Enough to even become magic proof. I'm part of the magic crafters family, so I know my magics. And this is as ancient as they come. Then plan B it is then. Plan B? When did we have a plan B? When I noticed those dogs. They looked familiar, but... Sheep creep! Bingo. Those are the same kind of dogs that were with Toasty when he ambushed us at the Monument Portal. He may have a way to help bring this guy down. But what about you guys? Forget us for now, Sparks. We'll focus on, on the fights and figuring out how to escape. You just find Toasty and learn what you can. Come back when you've learned everything you, you can. Sparks and Zoe look at each other hesitant to leave their friends behind. Okay. But we'll be back, so don't go, you go partying without me. Plus, uh, if we're betting treasure? My money's on you. Let's go. Oh, but I need my... Zoe and Sparks suddenly teleport back to the Artisan Kingdom, leaving Spyro and friends to themselves. Just then, Shepard returns. Well, looks like the red one's up first. You two will get front row seats. What about you, Red? You want a front seat? For once, I would appreciate it. Really? You usually stay down here, 
here since I left you out to pasture. You never captured other dragons before. Eh, whatever. No skin off my nose. The pets are gonna be huge. Oh yeah, and my hounds will find your dragonfly friend in no time. They're scouring the forest right now. Meanwhile, in the Artisan Kingdom, Toasty is getting poked and prodded by multiple dragon younglings while Mrs. Shoutfire is rocking a hatchling to sleep. Mrs. Shoutfire then stands up. All right, children. Time to give Sheepy a break and follow me for supper. Yay! Toasty looks on in annoyance as the younglings follow Mrs. Shoutfire, taking her leave. Jeez, what are those fangs? Sharpened? Just then, Sparks and Zoe approach Toasty as he cleans up the recess area. Toasty! Oh boy, just what I need, more interruptions. Hey, this ain't a walk in the park for us either, Lamb Chop. So what is it this time? Spyro and the others are in trouble. Ha! What else is new? What do you know about a guy named Old Man Shepherd? Who the what? Where did you hear that name? According to the Flamester, he's a local legend for kidnapping dragons and selling them to cannibals. Ha! As if. The old man's as squ squeamish as they come. Unless he can actually eat it. Spyro recognized the dogs you had with him back at the monument. He hoped you might have an idea how to take him down. <sighs> I thought I was done with him a long time ago. I only stole those dogs while he was asleep. So what do you know about a dragon chop chopper? I remember it like it was yesterday. A flashback then shows Toasty's perspective on Shepherd's Ranch. Long before the Nork Wars, the business was booming for the ranch. It started as strong arming. But when the demand for flock became high, the Norks were desperate and gave all they had for what food they could gain. The old man was rolling in treasure, at least until the day the dragons came along. I was just a lamb around the time of the Nork Wars, but I knew what was going on. In the end, the dragons were victorious and the Norks were kicked out. After that, dragons learned to breed and shepherd their own sheep leaving the ranch out of business. That's when Shepard snapped. He was so distraught over the business going under that he had a nervous breakdown, or a mental one. Really, I think it was a bit of both. After that, he sought alternative means of business. After finding a tome called How to Tame Monsters for Dummies, he learned how to become a beast tamer and learned how to wrangle some of the most dangerous beasts in the Five Kingdoms. That's when he started his battle ranch. The moment he began feeding my brethren to his beasts, that's when I got out of there faster than a leaf on a tree. And that brings us to and me moving into the Artisan Kingdom, watching you eat my brethren and swearing undying revenge by attempting to devour all dragons. Enough backstory for you? Zoe and Sparks look upon Toasty wide-eyed and wide-mouthed, shocked at the ending of that story. Zoe then cartoonishly closes Sparks' mouth as if she's opening a window shade. Okay, we know the story, but we still don't have much of a solution. <sighs> Gotta do everything myself, don't I? Back at the Battle Ranch, Flame is in the middle of the ring while a few thieves, wizards, bandits, etc. all cheer in anticipation for the upcoming battle. Ready to get a crowd? The Artisan Kingdom would have known about all of them. Look around. Ban it's filled with bandits, evil wizards, you name it. It's an underground cesspool of some of the sneakiest and vilest villains in, in the Artisan Kingdom. At least ones that aren't on the most wanted list. Meaning they can sneak right under the kingdom's nose. Just great. Just then, Shepard rises up on an automated pedestal, ready to announce the first match of the day to his microphone. Welcome to Old Man Shepherd's Battle Ranch! The crowd cheers in excitement. Today we have a special set of matches for you folks. For the first time ever, I've captured live dragons! And not just that, but they're the very ones that brought down the Nork Empire! As the crowd cheers, Ember notices something about Shepherd's words. First time ever? Guess he doesn't want to give Red any credit. 
In this corner, we got uh, one of those heroes who done brought down the Nork Empire, Flame! The crowd cheers for Flame, with Flame conflicted about how to take it considering the circumstances. Uh, thanks? And in this corner, from behind a couple gates, the sound of slamming and bashing can be heard. He's a real go-getter, one of my all-time champions, Rowdy the Raging Bull! Swiftly, Rowdy exits the gates, revealing himself to be a massive bull of muscular proportions and being ridden by a Nork Torador. After a bit of flailing, the bull launches the Torador Nork far away, a loud boom being heard as he landed. Oh, my flame is so out! Ah, dang it! Now I gotta get another Wrangler! Well, at least I don't have to pay him! Fighters ready? Not really! Get set! The bull looks at in Flame's directions with intense hate, mostly because all he can see is Flame's red color. Battle Ranch! In an instant, the bull begins running toward Flame, leading him to run away in fear while screaming like a little girl. Flame, what are you doing? Flame and the bull pass by I swiftly. You took down Dr. Shep, remember? He wasn't a hulking animal running after me, dude! Good point. Flame and the bull pass by again. Okay, hey Flame, how did you beat Shep at the Dry Canyon? I just charged at him! Well, there you go! Oh, sparks! Help! Flame decides to backflip over the bull, allowing it to pass him. Flame then lands on his feet as the bull skip its to stop his charge. The bull then turns around to face Flame, who readies himself for battle. I really hope I can do this again. Five treasures, Flame bites the dust. Mm. Sorry, just trying to lighten the mood. Ooh. The bull then charges, with Flame following suit. As the two get closer to each other, Flame screams in abject fear when his small stature causes him to slip in between the bull's horns and successfully rack his head, pushing the bull back. Spyro and friends then look on in surprise as the bull's horns are stuck to the ground. The bull unable to unstick himself due to dangling above his horns due to them holding him up. Whatcha? Phew. While surprised, the crowd cheers for Flame, much to his satisfaction. Thank you, thank you, I'll be here all week. Let's go, I'm on a roll, dude. Eh, fine then. You wanna get in the way of my pets? Well, let's see if your big friend over there can handle the next beast! Flame and Ember then switch out. Be careful. Always am. Oh, and Spyro wanted to bet against you. Wait, what? Next up is a pink dragoness with a heart of, uh, quartz, I think. Actually, it's just a gem. Shut it! I'm announcing here! <laughs> anyway, in this corner, Ember! The crowd cheers, leading Ember to show a bit of her ego by feeling satisfaction from the cheers. Fla Ember being egotistical, never thought I'd see the day. And in this corner! Ember looks on as the gates open, revealing the silhouette of a creature with multiple legs. The metallic menace from the high caves of Wizard's Peak, Metalback! The creature emerges to reveal itself to be a metallic spider known as a Metalback Spider. No! I hate bugs! What about Sparks? He's not gross, he's just annoying. Although I can't forget about the dragon nip incident. <laughs> Worst date of my life. As the metalback spider charges and hisses at her, Ember then surprisingly closes her eyes, concentrating on something. Spyro, Flame, the audience, and even Shepard look on in confusion as to why she's not running. As the metalback spider gets its closest, Ember unleashes a stream of her spirit flames, much to Spyro and Flame's shock. As the flames die out, the spider lays on its back deceased, its spirit burnt away while its body seemingly unharmed. The 
crowd cheers with excitement in their voice. One donation! <laughs> Slightly annoyed by the moo, Ember then shoots her flame at the stuck bull. <laughs> Ember then smugly smiles at the screen while the bull is then revealed to be charred, followed by cartoonishly poofing into dust. The crowd then cheers even louder for Ember. I could have done that this whole time. It's okay, pal. At least you're not Sparks. That's it! What the... What the... Ah! Ember then returns to the sidelines alongside her friends. How'd you do that? Yeah, you flamed him! Granny's been teaching me a lot about my new power. Just took a little... push. Yeah! Fine then! I guess the purple one's up! We've had enough, Shepard! Oh, really? Just then, Shepard swipes his left arm, which then causes a green energy rope to be revealed attached to his serpent collar. It's causing Spyro to be pulled, pulled and forced into the arena. Spyro! Spyro lands in the middle of the arena in slight pain, then gets up confused. What the? It's standard procedure, dragon! You disobey? I pull the leash! Ember then looks carefully as she notices a strange bracelet on Shepard's left wrist. No doubt the connector for the collar's leash. Flynn, I got an idea. And in this corner, the savior of the five kingdoms and the only purple dragon in existence, Spyro the Dragon! The crowd cheers in excitement for the next match just as the gates open, revealing the metal cage that Spyro and friends saw back in the ground. Ember and Flame look on as the sound of the locks on the cage begin to unlock. In this corner, the disastrous devil, the canine carnivore, the howling howl cloak terror, the champion himself, devil! The crowd cheers their highest as the cage door opens, Spyro cowering in fear under his wing at the thought of what lies within the cage. As the tension heightens, what emerges from within the cage is shockingly none other than a French bulldog pup. Rawr! Rawr, rawr. Spyro then takes a peek, then becoming perplexed at what he's looking at. Spyro then approaches the dog as the little canine continues to pant. This is it? That's it? It's no bigger than my- I watch it! This is a family program. Ugh, oh, the limits of Saturday morning cartoons, dude. Are you kidding? This'll be easy! <laughs> As a moment of awkward silence passes, the dog then transforms into a demonic and monstrous version of itself. <laughs> Spyro's expression of fear then hilariously returns. Holy sparks! In an instant, the devil dog eats Spyro, followed by chewing him as he's in his mouth. Spyro! Fear not. Ember and Flame then look to their side to see Red. Red! Look more carefully. Ember and Flame watch as the devil dog continues to chew, followed by showing an expression of annoyance at the toughness of his food, leading the devil dog to spit Spyro back out. He's okay! In a cartoonish state, Spyro looks hilariously mangled and shows a traumatic expression on his face. Thank goodness for impenetrable scales. You see, I knew someone was gonna get eaten. Not the time, Flame. <sighs> Scared, Spyro then decides to run from the Devil Dog, much to its resentment of being ignored. <laughs> Just what is that thing? It's a devil dog. They hail from the dark passage, deep within in the heart of the Dreamweaver's mountains. They typically eat molten lava rocks deep underground. Oh, yes, and like dragons, they also possess a cauldron gland. So, he can breathe fire? No, but it can inflame its mouth like an oven. Not gonna lie. I find it quite amusing. Jeez, whose side are you on? Right now, Spyro's. As Spyro runs away, he dodges each time the Devil Dog tries to eat him. 
Come on, Spyro! You beat Nasty Nork! You can beat a demon dog! Spyro then dashes forward and drifts to face the Devil Dog, followed by Spyro shooting flames into the Devil Dog's mouth. A moment of awkward silence passes. <coughs> flames can't aim out, out of the Devil Dog as he burped, slightly charring Spyro a bit. <laughs> that burned! And I'm fireproof. <laughs> Cowering in fear, Spyro instinctively activates his recently new power, turning into a spiky boulder. Whoa! Where did he learn that? Must have been on instinct. But how can he do that? The Earth Element. Earth Element? Well, I'll just stand there, claim your prey, or no dinner for a week! Within the ring, the Devil Dog tries to chew Spyro up only to be inconvenienced by the hard, rocky boulder. Dang, Nabbit! I guess it's gonna be a slow finale! But you gotta come out of there sometime, little dragon! <laughs> Unbeknownst to Shepard, what appears to be a pink wisp of flame is floating toward him, getting near his serpent bracelet. Almost! Remind me to thank your granny later. The pink wisp of flame then appears to be stretching out a tendril of pink flames in an attempt to grab at the bracelet. The flame makes contact with the bracelet, allowing Ember to show an expression of elation. However, the contact with the flame causes the bracelet to become intangible, having it accidentally phase through Shepard's hand and fall to the floor. What in the realm? Flame, now! Flame shoots a small fireball all at the wisp flame, causing an immense explosion. Ember and Flame to run toward the bracelet. Don't talk, he mustard! That guy I really doesn't know how to speak English, does he? Ember then spots the bracelet rolling into the ring. There! Hurry! As Ember and Flame run toward the bracelet, Shepard gets in the way, presenting a form of martial arts to them as he holds his Shepard staff. Give me an excuse! I've been itching to try and stretch my legs and my martial arts skills. Oh, please! What's an old guy gonna like you gonna do? Stuff, 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 stuff. Uh, not my tail. No, oh, it's my horn. Yeah. In the aftermath, Ember and Flame are beaten up in a hilariously mangled state. Shepard standing victorious over them. Well, who knew he was good at kung fu, dude? Literally, no one. Shepard then picks up the bracelet, once again having hold over the dragons. Face it! Ember, Flame, Shepard, and Red look on as Spyro's Earth Boulder begins to crack. You're plumb out of luck! As the chewing continues, a beam of ice hits the Devil Dog at its side, causing it to whimper. Oh, what now? What? Holy tarnation! As Shepard steps away to distance himself from the crossfire, none other than Toasty, Sparks, and Zoe arrive with Toasty shooting out his ice beams from um, the eyes of his pumpkin head. Time for this show to go on ice! Okay, that was just terrible. For everyone. Like you could do better? Oh, I'm voiced by a comedian. I could so do better. Uh, guys? Oh yeah. Eat ice tray, losers! <laughs> Toasty wreaks havoc on the criminals in Battle Ranch using his ice ray leading the audience to run away in fear. Spyro and friends then look on in awkwardness. You know, sometimes I begin to see how he made such a good villain. Agreed! Let's go! Ember and Flame enter the arena as Red looks on, on in, being extremely observant. Spyro! The boulder shatters to reveal Spyro. The purple dragon then gets up to greet his friends. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, oh wait. The dog's behind you. The, the two ooh, ooh, look back, only to find the devil dog staring right down at them. <laughs> Suddenly, a beam of ice enters the devil dog's mouth, quelling the flames and forcing it to transform back into its little dog form. The devil dog whimpers as its mouth is super cold. After a slight and lengthy tantrum of pain, the dog finally feels better until Spyro and friends approach it, looking down at the dog with a smug expression. Uh, 
swiftly, Spyro breathes fire onto the Devil Dog, causing it to become charred until it cartoonishly poofs into dust. That felt satisfying. No! What in tarnation is going on? Well, well, well. If it isn't the highest paying shepherd, do I know you? You're not the tax collector, are you? Because I pay my dues! Oh, for pig! Toasty then takes off his pumpkin head to reveal himself as a sheep. What? Little creepy sheepy! OMG, that's so much worse! <laughs> my new name is Toasty, and don't you forget it! So, you're finally coming home and being the snack y'all was meant to be for my babies! As if I came to stop you. You wanna help these dragons? Last I heard, you made a big as an inventor for the Nork Empire. And now you wanna help them after the humiliating defeat? Toasty thinks for a moment. Hmm, maybe a peace offering's in order. Shepard then waves his hand, using the collar leashes to toss Spyro and friends into the center of the arena. Come back home and we can be the richest tamers in all the five kingdoms. I'll even throw in the dragons. I know you've been dying to taste one. Here! Shepard throws Spyro in front of Toasty. Toasty then looks down at Spyro with consideration to Shepard's offer. I'll let you have a little taste of the purple in advance. No doubt a rare delicacy since he's the only one. <laughs> Spyro looks up at Toasty, worried about what happens next. Toasty is still looking down at Spyro, followed by showing a smile across his face, something that heavily worries Spyro as Shepard continues to laugh. <laughs> Just then, a blast of ice hits the bracelet Shepard's wearing on his left wrist. What the? What are you doing? Despite the humiliation, I've been quite enjoying my parole. Also, I heard dragon meat tasted gamey anyway. Again, dragon cannibals! Shut it, flame brain! That's right, I could call you who names too! Shepard then unleashes the matte magic within his mysterious bracelet, breaking the ice and summoning a glowing green whip of energy. Well, looks like tough love's in order! Toasty then pulls his pumpkin head back on, and then raises his sight. I couldn't agree more, you crazy old fossil! I told you never to call me crazy again! Shepard then begins using his energy whip to attack Toasty, only for Toasty to counter each attack with his scythe. Meanwhile, Spyro and Fred's look, look on at the battle. Should we help him out? Nah, I got a better idea. Just then, Zoe comes out from the underground on cages. Way ahead of you! Zoe? Sorry for the delay but it took a while to let the dogs out. Just then, creatures from all over the Five Kingdoms run out of the underground prison, Shepard and Toasty taking notice while in the arena. Suffer it, suck it, ash! The stampede of creatures then begins to trample Shepard and Toasty. Is that line gonna cause some copyright problems? What, who am I kidding? That company's going under. After the creatures disperse, Shepard and Toasty are revealed to be cartoonishly mangled in a hilarious fashion. I really hate those dragons! Offer still stands! Toasty then shakes his head and regains his composure, followed by walking out, out of his robes and pumpkin head and, and, and then on towards Shepard. Don't brush your luck, you old coot! Toasty then shoots his beam of ice at Shepard's bracelet followed by shattering it to pieces. The colors around Spyro and friends then appear and break into pieces, their magic destroyed for good. As Shepard tries to make a run for it, Toasty freezes his body in ice, leaving his head the only thing unfrozen. Just what are you gonna do with me? Oh, we've got ideas. Leave him in my care. I have a few friends in the Beast Maker Kingdom that'll ensure his sentence equals his crimes. You sure? I may be old, but I'm still a dragon. Besides, I have my own journey to attend to, while you all must continue yours. Well, we're glad to have given you your freedom. Oh, believe you me, you've given me more than enough.
That night at the courtyard, Spyro and friends are having a camp out with the children, as well as Mrs. Shoutfire and Toasty, who seems to actually be enjoying himself. So, does this mean we're friends now? Goodness no! I just prefer not being in jail! Whatever you say, Toasty dude. <laughs> Did you just call me? Don't get used to it. Oh. In the meantime, Spyro and Ember are looking up at the stars. Well? Okay, helping them out with the hatchlings isn't as bad as I thought. Better than the Dark Hollow. At least Shepard isn't poaching creatures anymore. And Red's free to live his life. You know, he could be mistaken for an elder. But the fact that he's a magic crafter dragon explained the spirit gem around his neck. Ember then realizes something in Spyro's words. A red dragon with a spirit gem. Something on your mind, Ember? Uh, no. It's nothing. At least I hope it's not. Meanwhile, in the Dark Hollow, Shepard is blasted into a nearby boulder on the ground. Please! I'm sorry I failed! I did the best I could! I did everything you said! On the contrary, you actually succeeded. I wanted you to gauge his power, and now I have. You were even able to throw in his pesky friends. After that, you would be promoted in my eyes. Then why are you punishing me? Well, we all have to make your sentence look like it took a toll on you. And besides, it took a lot to obtain those serpent collars. And I demand recompense. <laughs> Shepard looks on in fear as Red laughs, and the dark gem on his staff begins to glow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to check out our merch store, buy me a coffee page, and Amazon affiliate link linked in the description and pinned comment below so you can help us expand the channel and give you guys higher quality content. Also, if you want to check out our original content, be sure to check out the playlists linked in the description below. With all that said and done, I'm JT Anime, and I'll check you guys later.